Welcome back to the Fostering Financial Victories podcast. I'm Eric, your host. I am joined today by Katie Sanders. So Katie is a member of our team with the Foster Victor Wealth Advisors. Um, Katie, you've got an interesting background of kind of how you got to us. Um, tell everybody like what your role is on our team and then let's get into kind of a little bit more of your background. Okay. Just a heads up, we're gonna talk about money and fitness. Yes. <laughs> Two polarizing topics. <laughs> yes, yes. So I'm Katie Sanders. Um, been with the Foster Victor team for just about three months now. Kind of made it through the uh, financial services industry. I've been working here for about five years. Um, grew up in Greenville. Went to school at the University of Alabama. So I'm really popular person to spend you, Saturdays with in the fall. So about ninety percent of the people just turned. Yeah, off. yeah, exactly. So I um, always <laughs> want to throw that out there. Be completely transparent. I think that's important. Um, but worked in consulting and public relations kind of before I find, found the financial services industry and have been there um, for about five years. But okay. specifically with Foster Victor, I work more in the insurance space. So okay. anywhere from illustrations all the way through to servicing your contracts, I'm your girl. All right. So Katie knows more about insurance than most people ever will. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you may have that conversation a few yes, times, right? Yes, yes. So money and, um, and fitness, right? So You've got a fitness background. You didn't tell anybody about yes. that. So kind of tell everybody a little bit about, about that because that's why you're here. Yes. So kind of grew up, always have been active, um, played sports all growing up, soccer, ran cross country. Um, I've always loved it. One of those weird people who really likes to run. I'm personally, I think if you like to run, <laughs> um, you're better at running. So that's my biggest tip for today. If you like to run, you'll enjoy it a lot more. So Just cut it from there. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I um, have always been kind of active, but a couple years ago, joined a gym here in town, Iron Tribe, and worked out there for a couple years and then became a part-time coach there. So yeah. that's kind of how I've gotten into the um fitness industry, so to speak. So there's a lot of similarities with with people on how they manage both uh, financial matters and also health or wellness. Um, what are some of the, I guess, how, do, how should we start this? So kind of unpacking, you know, some of the myths about, the, you know, the, the fad diets that people oftentimes will find themselves on. Well, there's some also, I guess there are also some times where people will do the same thing with money. Yes. Where they're trying to get a quick fix and then they realize after about 30 days that, hey, it's working. I'm just going to stop. Yeah. What What do you think? Like, so I think the biggest thing there is like discipline, obviously, with both of those is mm -hmm. like the key thing. Like you said, with the fad diet or with like you're doing a really good job saving money. Um, it's really easy to do that for a couple of weeks and then completely fall off the wagon one way or another. So I think just learning that discipline, making those good habits stick. I think sometimes you have to be really, really conscious of that, especially in the first couple of months. Um, it gets hard. You want to quit one way or another, um, but kind of pushing through that. But also thinking having someone to keep you accountable is the biggest thing for both of those. So whether you're in the gym setting and you need a coach or you need a workout partner, same thing in the fitness in, or same thing in the finance industry, you need someone that you're pairing with an advisor and then within your household, your spouse or someone to kind of be on the same page as you. You know, I think, I think you're right. So the accountability piece is huge and, and you know, the, the easiest way to be held accountable is to tell somebody a goal. Yes. Right. So if you, if you make the mistake and, and tell somebody you're going to do something. Yeah. And then they're on, it, on top of you if you're not doing it. If you, you see them a lot, they're, they're yeah. always going to ask you about it. Yeah. And when they see you doing something that doesn't fit that goal, that, you know, that's the way the accountability piece comes Yeah. From, and right? everyone's an expert in their space, I would say. Like for me personally, like even though I work in the financial services industry, like I still need someone. I needed someone at Foster Victor to help me out with a plan as far as savings goes. You would think that I would like know that myself, but you really don't. Everyone's an the expert in their specific field. So I think that applies to both fitness and finance. Like take your advice from someone who knows what they're talking about versus sometimes we get on the internet, do a little bit of research and we're like, okay, I got it. I can do this all by myself. And I don't think that that lasts. Yeah, I, I agree with you there um, because you, you kind of get three or four days into it and then you miss a day or miss yeah. two days and then, all right, well, I'll just start again next month. Or it's a splurge thing where you're like, oh, I've done really good for two weeks. I'm going to have my cheat meal. Oh, is that the and cheat then, meal yeah, thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turns into like a cheat month or same thing with <laughs> like I'm my, I think, weakness is definitely like the spending portion of it. I'd rather have a splurge spend than like a splurge meal. So I'm like, oh, I've done a really good job of saving here for a couple of months. I'm going to go out and make like this big purchase. Whereas if I momentum. had, yeah, if I had someone being like, hey, this is a specific goal that we are saving towards, like you making this purchase 
completely backs out everything that we've done here for the last couple of months or a couple of years. So you think that might be the first place to start is just to maybe identify what the goal needs mm -hmm. to be. And, and that's a kind of a slippery slope too, because yeah. people can make goals that sound fantastic on paper or look fantastic. And then they will quickly realize, oh, yeah. you know, you're going to go run a five minute mile and yeah, I, yeah if you're starting out at 10 that, minute, if you're a 10 minute mile pace and you're like, I want to get down to a five minute pile. It's probably got a lot of, yeah, I got a lot of work to do. So yeah. I think making those, I think um, the wealth coaches at Foster Victor do a really good job of like the short term and long term goals. And I think it applies to both, um, both areas. You want to make something, hey, in the next couple months, I get like these small wins versus further down the line, I'm making those big goals, whether that's you know, a weight loss goal or a performance goal as far as like, I want to run a marathon. Um, I think you need to have kind of like tiny checkpoints along the way, and that's going to help you be more successful and help you stay motivated. Definitely. So with having a coach on the fitness side, um, so I, I can tell you transparently, I am one of those weirdos that can train by themselves for some <laughs> yeah, reason. Yeah, that's great um, for you. <laughs> I, I don't know how I can do that, but I, I can't. So, but I can see the value of having someone who can guide you along the, the way from a yes. coach perspective. Where do you start with somebody who's brand new? I think just kind of doing like a baseline test of like what is their background. For me, when I joined the gym that I'm at, the only background that I had was I played soccer and I loved to run. So I didn't have any weightlifting background. So obviously you kind of have to start with the basics there of learning the movement. So putting everyone through t like a baseline test to kind of see where they're at. Have they worked out before? What's their workout background? Like are they familiar with the vocabulary a lot of times of just knowing like what movements to do? So baseline first figuring out their goals and then how do we make that gap? Um, how do we get from one to the other? I mean, I, I would honestly say that's exactly how we do it with the, yeah. the, the financial side too. So the, the comparisons would be, you got to figure out where you are first yeah. and understand what the, the maybe what, understand what the goals should be and what's a, what's, what's a goal that you can actually reach. I think bite size um, approaches to things mm -hmm. like this is, is helpful because you start to see some momentum and you get some little small wins. So think about the person who is going to come in from a financial perspective. You know, the first thing might literally be to figure out where all their money's going. Yes. Right. So you said the spending piece. Most people who like to spend, they really don't like to watch to see where it happened, where, where it went, and because yeah. that's that accountability side. So I, I, it's tough to thing. see. Like I've gone through the process that um, we put all of the clients through, and it's kind of tough. Where you're like, "Ooh, do I really spend that much on <laughs> like food? Do I really spend that much on like going out or entertainment?" Um, I think that that's really important in just doing like the inventory. Like you said, like people who have maybe hopped around jobs, like they have all these random 401ks or retirement plans that are open, and they're like, "Oh, you know, I completely forgot about this money that I have with yeah. this company I worked four or five years." So I think that that's a great job we do kind of like that inventory, that back binding to see kind of where all their money is. So from a, a fitness and health perspective, it, as crazy as this sounds, it's really expensive to eat healthy. It's so expensive, <laughs> so expensive to eat healthy. How can that possibly make sense when you think about it? Because it's, you're eating less of the bad stuff, which, yeah. you know, more ingredients, all those things. But, you know, those two things kind of play into each other. So if somebody's trying to start their financial journey of getting themselves organized, but also wanting to get healthy at the same time, how do you balance? How do you, what are some tricks of the trade that you could give to people to, to say, I don't really have to spend a fortune to, yes. to get healthy, but what, what can I do? I think the biggest thing is kind of figuring out like meal prepping or meal planning, mm. kind of figuring out what you're going to eat throughout the week and then going to the grocery store and buying everything um, for the week ahead. I shop at Aldi. I think it's great. I do like, so you kind of, you once you kind of figure out the system there, you got to bring your own bags, all that kind of stuff. But once you figure out the system, you get everything that you get at a Harris Teeter or a Publix. So I think that that's one way to kind of save money is to buy in bulk or to kind of plan ahead so you're not running to the grocery store. Hey, I got to go to the grocery store after work. Closest one to us is Publix. Like it's going to add up through the week. <clears throat> and then I also think just eating out in general or doing those meal prep services. Sometimes they cost a little bit more. I mean, you have to put that into your budget if that's something that is a priority for you. Maybe, hey, I'm going to do the meal prepping service for the week. That means that I'm not going to eat out during the week as much or I'm not going to go out to lunch every day that I'm at work. So kind of prioritizing and making a plan at the beginning of the week will help you 
or even for the month, hey, I'm really going to make this a focus to go to the grocery store once a week. This is what I'm going to buy, and then I'm going to eat everything that I purchased at the grocery store because I'm one of those people where I'm like, oh, I'm going to the grocery store. I bought all this great stuff, and then on Thursday I'm like, mm, but I really want to go out to eat now, <laughs> and I have all these groceries that are going to go bad. Yeah, yeah that, I, the meal prepping thing is a huge deal, and you, and you could probably attest to this being in our office now for a couple months. Um, there's a lot of that that goes on. Yeah. Surprisingly. But there's also a lot of eating out that goes on, yes, too. Yes, yeah. There's a lot of <laughs> Both polar sides. Of the, yeah. Um, but really, both of them add up. Yes. They do. So you, you kind of got to be conscious about what you're doing if you're if you're trying mm-hmm. to go down both roads there and, and manage, I, I think, the, co- the cost there. Um, is there anything that you would compromise from a financial perspective in order to hit a fitness goal? What could you justify? I got a couple, but what could you justify? I think that, like, I love my gym. So I think, like, gym membership for me is one of those things that I need, you know, I needed to prioritize in my budget. Um, Also, like, shoes. Like, that's one big thing. Like, shoes are expensive. Tennis shoes, like, good training shoes. So that's one thing that you have to build into your budget, and I'm going to do. So maybe I'm going to have to make a financial sacrifice somewhere else. I've heard it put this way a couple times with fitness-related expenses. um, Cry once buy once yeah. Like, right? <laughs> yeah don't buy the Those, cheapest yes, thing yeah. just cry the first time that you bought it and then move on yes uh, and then you won't have to buy it again maybe, maybe yes that's, that's, that's the way to look at it um what do you think is worth spending extra money on when it comes down to that type of stuff i like, think the shoes, the shoes and then i'm um, just depending on i guess what type of workout you do like i just bought a new garmin watch which are mm-hmm. not very cheap so but I like it for my running and for kind of tracking purposes so that's something that like I want to splurge on I know some people are like the grips or the the fitness equipment if they're building like a home gym like that stuff is very costly it's definitely an investment I'm kind of just have to figure out where you want to spend that money (laughs) (laughs) all right so what for for you it sounds like fitness is probably the first uh focus Yes. And then you started to explore this financial road um, of planning. Yes. Which one was harder initially? I think finance for sure, just because like growing up, I feel like healthy lifestyles, that was something my parents did a really good job with us. We were always playing outside. We were playing sports, making good choices, learned how to help with dinner, like elementary school, learned how to pack our lunches. So kind of, they did a good job of instilling those habits. Just with finance, um, my like schooling, I didn't learn like a lot about it. Like we had one financial planning course in high school. I think we played like life every week. You know, it was just kind of one of those throwaway classes. We learned how to like balance our checkbook, which is a good skill to have, but just didn't know like, okay, what are 401k options? What am I really like, as far as my salary goes, what am I actually gonna take home? You know, until you get into that first job, you don't really know. Yeah, what are taxes? I have to pay for my health care. I have to, you know, (laughs) I have to pay for property taxes on my car. Like there's just all these extra expenses. And I don't think growing up, obviously you don't have to incur those expenses. So I think that that is a really hard lesson for a young professional kind of right out of college. I have this money, like how do I appropriately budget for it? So I think that that definitely took some time to learn. You know, that, that's need. a topic that we brought up a lot. Uh, and we, we work on some things with, with younger um, folks about trying to educate them on what they need to know. Yes. And I agree with you that the curriculum in high school and or college you know, having a business degree, granted it was a long time ago, yeah. but there was there were no classes that were taught or available on personal finance. It yes. was all more like a corporate finance perspective versus the personal side, which is, you know, that's, that stuff's great, but most people are never going to try to figure out how to analyze a company's balance sheet. Yes. They're just yeah. not. So I think there's a, a lot of room for improvement as far as what information is available to kids and, and adolescents as they get older to mm-hmm. maybe learn some of that stuff. And, you know, you said it that you learned as a kid the whole, you know, healthy lifestyle, but you didn't pick it up in day one. Yeah, it, it definitely took, took time. 15 years. For sure. To get, and you're probably still getting to a point where I'm still learning a few things. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it just goes to say it, it's not overnight. And yeah, it's definitely a continuing learning process. Yeah. I think the, the the issue that most people run into, and you, you probably see this as well, is they want immediate satisfaction. Oh, yeah. I, I want to lose the weight right now or yesterday, or mm-hmm. I want to be able to run a five-minute mile tomorrow. 
I don't want to be able to do that, by the yeah. way. That sounds like <laughs> yeah. hurt. You're um, like, never on yeah. my, my top goal or I list. Want, or I want to pay off all my debt in the next two days. Yes. So I, I think a couple of things to take from this would be you've got to do it incrementally, something that's very manageable. So maybe coming mm-hmm. up with something that's a daily thing that you do, whether it be fitness-related or you know, nutrition-related or even, even money-related. I think maybe that's a start. Yes. Um, what, what do you think? I think so, and just kind of – like you said, getting a good baseline, if this is not something that you are currently thinking about, I think kind of taking a good inventory and getting a good baseline for either um, side of the coin. Um, I think the hardest thing as far as starting out with the finances is looking at your spending and looking what you're spending every month and where kind of like you're throwing away money versus what you could be saving. Because I think especially being in this industry, I've started to think a lot about retirement. And yeah, maybe that's 30 years away for me right now. But what I'm doing right now is really playing into that long term. So as much as I want that instant gratification of, you know, I'm saving up for something and I get to purchase it right away. I also got to think about the long term. So I think doing those small daily habits will pay tenfold, you know, down the road. So, so what, what would be one of those daily habits for you? I look at like my bank account and my credit card statement every single week or, you know, just to make sure, hey, are they lining up, but also making sure what am I spending? So that was something early on. Now, I don't do it as much now, but definitely when I was younger, like a younger professional, um, kind of looking at that, but also just making an actual budget and am I sticking to that budget? And then at the end of the month, okay, where did I overspend? And maybe do I need to increase this category and I can decrease this category or cut something out or I need to add something in? So I think just kind of having a good look at it. I can't believe the number of people who are my age, who probably never, ever look at the Mm -hmm. credit card statement, which is like, I'm like, that's scary. That terrifies me. I'm like, number one, you could have charges on there that you don't even know about. (laughs) It's scary to look in there too. (laughs) Yeah. And then number two, I'm like, you don't, you don't know what you spend. Like how many people don't know what they spend on a monthly basis? Uh, Like of of all ages, not just younger people. So I think just kind of, I'm like, how do you know that you're going to have what you need to pay your bills or to pay your obligations? Yeah, I, that's that's very. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people who would fall into that category. Yeah, but yeah. there's also a lot of people who who um who don't know how much food they're taking in either. Yes. Yeah. Right. So I mean, we talk about the fitness piece on working out, but that's probably the bigger one. Yeah. Ninety like percent of it's probably in the kitchen. Yes, definitely. It's like you can go run five miles, but if you're eating like ice cream for dinner every it's single, not which I love, I love a good ice cream <laughs> for dinner every once in a while, but it's not going to work out for you. So yeah, it's the same thing kind of with your, but it's like your daily budget for your food. I know some people count calories, some people count macros. It kind of works the same thing with finances is like, how are you budgeting out? You know, what kind of nutrients that you're going to be taking in for the day? Um, You need a certain amount of protein. You need a certain amount of carbs. You know, everyone's different as far as what that looks like, but it works kind of the same way as like your budget in the kitchen versus like your budget for finances. I think it's just two topics that they go together really well, but people oftentimes, I don't know, they kind of wing it Yeah. for both really. And I mean, I've been guilty of both of them as well. You know, the, you know, the nutrition side was something that I think Garrett in our office, he and I did a couple of years ago where, you know, we got really regimented for, you know, I think it was 90 days or something. Yeah. It was miserable. Yeah. It's not, it was it's really not the miserable. Most fun sometimes. But yeah. It worked. Yeah. It getting into the habit. The habit. And yeah. it set the habit. Right. Yes. So I think the habit piece is the hard, the hard part to initially get through. Yes. Um, I agree. Okay. So with regards to um, something that you maybe do every day from a fitness perspective, what, do you have anything that you do like that every day? I do try and work out or like move my body at some point every single day, whether that's running or I'm going to the gym or I've like really love to walk. Okay. Just like walking with friends. So just like moving, moving my body every day. I think that's something that I really try to do. I'm a better person like in the office when I work out. I'm just like clearer mind, feel better overall. I'm better friend, better family member. I just think like your fitness and moving your body has a lot to do not only with physical health but your like mental status. I definitely agree with that part. Yeah. Uh, is that, so I'm one of those who work out early in the morning, and if I don't, I know for the rest of the day it's You're not, just dragging. It's not good. Which you think would be the opposite. The people who are like, I can't believe you work out early in the morning. I'm like, I have more energy throughout the day when I work out in the morning versus when I'm like, yeah. oh, I'll take that extra hour and right. sleep in. It really never feels like it works out. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. then the whole day you're like, I got to work out this afternoon if I'm going to leave my body. 
So is there anything that you would never sacrifice in your budget for? I know never is a hard word to, to kind of wrap around, is but hard. is there anything that you look at that you spend money on that you say, I'm not going to Besides the necessities that. like food, you know, the bills that I got to pay, um, power like water, all that kind of stuff, I really – I do love to shop and I, like I do like to spend money, but the thing I love to spend money on is gifts. So I do have like a specific portion of my budget for gifts, whether that's like birthday gifts um, for friends or family or just for people kind of, you know, what they're going through in their life. So that's something that I don't think I'll ever take out of my budget, but I've learned that I do need a budget for it because uh, then I'm, you know, kind of just spending money frivolously. So you so, kind of get out of control? Yeah. So like my gift budget, I think is like a non-negotiable. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Mine's probably kid stuff because yeah. I have a house full of them. But <laughs> I have a niece and yeah. nephew, and I would say 90% of the gift budget yeah. goes to to them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so is is there anything that you would give someone advice on if they're listening to this and, and they didn't shut you off because we you – know, Yeah, the Alabama thing. thing right? Yeah. <laughs> is there anything that you would tell someone who said, all right, where do I start? What can I do right now to help myself from a financial perspective and or – the fitness side that's doable you probably heard of this a few times yes. but meaningful I think on the finance side and this is something like my parents told me and I think a lot of people kind of have this philosophy of paying yourself first like how we learn to save is by making it a monthly obligation whether that's hey I'm putting aside a hundred dollars of every paycheck into a savings account or I am putting it into an investment account or I'm ma making a premium payment on my life insurance. I'm kind of just like a structured, I'm going to pay myself first and kind of building that into your bills portion of your budget. I think that's the biggest thing. Like you'll never learn to save unless you make that an or obligation. Treat it like a bill. Yeah, treat it like a bill and not just like, I'm going to do all, of, you know, I'm going to spend all the things, I'm going to make my other bill payment and then whatever's left at the end of the month, I'm going to save. I don't know about you. That does not work out for me because whatever's left at the end of the month, I'm like, I'm I'm gonna spend the, it on like <laughs> something fun. Well, there's really yeah. nothing ever left. Yeah, yeah. At the end, or you get at to the twentieth of the month, and you've already yeah. Run out. You're like so. I, I just think that making that a priority. Yeah. Uh, if you're just uh, learning to save, or even if you're like well seasoned, you're you know into your career, and you have not thought about that. Um, a lot of us do have retirement plans or four one k plans. Hey, that gets taken directly out of your paycheck, and that's like a wonderful feature. But I think just making that savings, whether whether that's life insurance or investment, or just putting it into your savings account, kind of making that a bill would be like a biggest thing as far as the finance side goes. Okay. What about the fitness side? I think just moving your body just every move. day. Yeah, that and then just like picking, kind of like looking at your diet and saying, hey, if I do eat out a lot, <clears throat> maybe I'm going to try to only eat out on weekends and kind of just making that a priority. And then you can kind of go a little bit forward more into like, hey, I'm going to meal prep or I'm going to meal plan and do all this stuff. But kind of just choosing one small thing maybe to cut out and that might be soda or that might be eating out every day at, for lunch at work. Yeah, there's a lot of little um, hidden things that can catch people. Yeah. That just add up. Yes. Right? Same thing with the expensive side. You just get nickel and dimed all day, and then you realize, you know, I spent $500 on this kind of nonsense. Yes. What did I do that for? Yeah, it's eye-opening. Yeah. Um, okay. So, Katie, the, the last two things here, is you get the questions that everybody else has gotten. Okay. Okay. So, last two things you spent money on is the first question. Let's see. I already know one of them is birthday gift for my yes. nephew. <laughs> He's turning Surprise. three next month. Surprise. <laughs> um, so that's one of them. And I think probably the other thing is gas. Probably is the last time. Yeah. Which is also getting expensive too. Yeah. 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 Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. And uh, the second question, I think this will be really interesting. If you could buy anything in the world, what would it be? Oh. Regardless of how much it costs. Oh, goodness. Oh, you are not going to like my oh, answer. Oh, no. <laughs> this is the best one of all. I would buy... Club level season tickets to the Alabama games. <laughs> Lifet lifetime. Lifetime club tickets and to every playoff game or any bowl game. Very, I would just uh, have a free pass to go to any Alabama game that I wanted to. Of you, yeah. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that 12 team playoff that might be <laughs> happening. I'm feeling really good about that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, anything else you want to add to this conversation? I think this is probably a good jumping off point. Um, as long as nobody turned us off for the Alabama yes, piece. But yeah, I gave them two, di yeah. two different opportunities. Um, I just think, like you said, both of those really do go hand in hand. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing that we talked about is discipline, kind of like sticking with whatever your goals are. But 
I think even bigger than that is just having that accountability of having someone, whether that's a coach um, in the fitness world <clears throat> or that is a wealth coach or an advisor in the financial world, um, it really does pay off in the long run, I would say, to have somebody there along in that journey for you and somebody who's an expert in that field. And if you don't have access to either one of those, yeah. tell somebody. Yeah. <laughs> somebody somebody like, knows. Tell somebody. somebody a crazy goal that you want to accomplish yes. and, and ask them to ask you about it. Yes. And that can also start. Like it can help. Um, okay. Katie, thank you for spending some time with us. Absolutely. Um, guys, if you have questions or comments or suggestions on anything you'd like for us to cover in future um, episodes, please reach out to us. You can find us on our website at fostervictorwa.com. You can also follow us on Instagram. Uh, Foster Victor Wealth Advisors is our little tag there. Um, share this with anybody who you think might feel that they might like it. Um, thanks. See you next time. Information contained in this podcast was intended for general use, not to be used as specific advice. For content tailored to your personal situation, please contact one of our wealth coaches.